Hi guys, it's me again, I'm from yanesway.com. We do quite a few challenging birthday children cakes throughout the year. If you ask me, probably the most challenging for cakes comes from my grandchildren's requests. So they watch videos, they watch these TV shows, and then uh, they play all those video games with their little fingers. And they will never run out of the ideas what is going to be the next birthday cake for them. Uh, one of my granddaughter turning four this year, and she has another challenging cake for me. There is probably hundreds of, uh, hundreds of thousands, maybe millions of girls at the moment in the world who try to be, look like this princess. So she is very beautiful and uh, she has the ability of turning everything ice when she touch. She wears blue instead of pink. So you know what I'm talking about. This is the Princess Elsa from the movie Frozen. So I'm going to make three-dimensional Elsa cake for my granddaughter and take this opportunity to share this information with you. Just record everything and make a gesture free tutorial video and share this one video. So there will be always some templates involved. I always give you some information that you can print. If you didn't do that yet, please go uh, uh, register yourself as a free member to our website yenersway.com and you can also download all those templates from the downloadable materials section under this video. So next thing what I like to do is uh, to go through the planning section. So I'm going to draw a few things and then decide what to do, how big and how wide is the cake. And uh, I like to share this thoughts with you. These are all my reference pictures I print out from the internet. So when you go in Google Images, you just type in Elsa the Princess and then uh, you get hundreds of pictures. I cannot rely all the pictures but I have it from the internet. So I select the one that I'm looking for. So I'm looking for such a uh, position of the body. And uh, also I'm needing, I'm needing some uh, information also for the details of the face. And then the, also the, the back of the hair, there's a, a nice pleat there. So this is a bit of special part that I have to follow up. So I have these two pictures to, to see that exactly what does it look like. And then that's all. I don't need these ones at the moment. So I need this one later on, just put it aside. And as you realize it, from this picture, I put in the photocopy machine, enlarge it to the size that I'm looking for. So this one also don't need it at the moment. So I have this here uh, semi-transparent uh, sheet that I can use my pencil and follow by the uh, marking uh, uh, pen. So I put this underneath here. My first decision will be where is the my board. So I will use first the pencil as I do always. That's my board around there. I think I will use around this much. And the uh, second decision is which part of this uh, figure will be the cake, which part I'm going to do out of sugar. So I'm going to make this part as cake and probably around this area, this area. And as you see over here, there's the internal skirt finish here. And there's also outside the internal skirt, there's also cake. So which uh, I feel that this is not big enough for a cake. I'm going to use this one as the uh, finishing of the cake part. So that's why I'm going to draw from here and I probably go a little bit more sort of spreading uh, around the around the base just like that. So that is exactly what I'm looking for as a plan. So uh, because the cake is quite high uh, and then it will be quite difficult to make without internal support. So I'm going to use one uh, long threaded road uh, comes from in the, from the middle of the board but it's actually the body is placed it a little bit like this so that's actually center of the of the of the board like this here and i will put that cake a little bit more backwards here so that one is the point that i'm going to place my internal support not like this one this is not this is not really the right way to do it because it's very difficult to bend this everything i'm going to use 10 millimeters m10 it's called uh, comes from here and it's around there let me see how much I guess if I use 30 centimeters, 30 centimeters, I will have enough underneath here to put my uh, nut and go like this all the way around this area because I need to have also some sort of extension from the body out to hold that sugar part. So somewhere around uh, 30 centimeters, I believe is right. That's correct. 30 centimeters. And of course, uh, if I put uh, my sugar part here, 
and I need uh, one more extension here. Probably I will use the uh, wood skewer, uh, but this size, somewhere around there. So if I finish my cake here, and I can just pop the wood skewer here, it will hold nicely to continue with the rest of the, the upper part of the body and the head. So uh, let me make this one a little bit more clear with that with that marking pen. Just like this. And that's my internal support. Somewhere around there. That's a nut. Probably comes a bit out. So I'm gonna have a, a legs over here to make sure that this part doesn't touch the uh, table. So uh, that's actually the cake, this one. Like this. So how do I build the cake? I'm gonna use the pre-sandwiched uh, mud cake because it's just coming from the uh, fridge. It's nice and cold. I can uh, shape it immediately. So if I use just a, a soft, fresh uh, sponge, and then try to use it with a really uh, just a soft ganache. It will be very difficult to firm this up uh, right away. So I will use the cold cake or the pre-sandwich. I will only use some ganache in between to sandwich those or stick those uh, pre-sandwich cake parts. So it will be about, uh, my cake is about five centimeters. So it will be around, this will be the first cake like this. And then this will be then the second cake like that. So as you see that, I will cut this one and join this part here to shave it later on. Probably like that. I'm not so sure exactly how this end up, but this is sort of like a preliminary plan that I can follow. Something like this. Then you will see later on, uh, it will be very easy to, to finish this one off. Uh, as I mentioned also, there is also all the pre-ganache in the middle, like that. So we have finished our plan already. This is exactly what we're looking for. We have the, all the information, direction is there, guidance is there. So uh, next thing I will explain you what we need for tools and material, recipes and, and ingredients, etc. Okay, what we have here. I have half a slab of pre-sandwich cold mud cake. So I need circles. As you see over here, one, two, three, four, five circles here. I can easily cut about this size, the first one, the second one, third one, fourth one, and the fifth one, and the leftovers I'm sure we can need for somewhere to shape the uh, cake properly. So I have a board, 35 centimeters, and uh, I will join this uh, internal support uh, with the nuts in the right place, not in the center, just a bit more on the side. Uh, that's the hole here, that's the center, but I'm gonna put it over here because I want to have the skirt goes more backwards. And I have uh, wooden skewers, to, uh, to combine or extend the construction a little bit more backwards. I have a wrong place over here. I will have a little bit more backwards here. Then I have uh, straws. This is a slush straw, this is a large one. I will use them to protect the cake from this metal. I just use as a separator. So, and uh, what I have, ganache to sandwich, and a couple of tools for to make the face and the hands, but I'm not gonna use much of it. I will use more like the scissor and I will use also my face mold, which I did myself out of pastillage. I will gonna talk about this one later on when I'm doing the face. So uh, fondant, blue and white. So I'm gonna mix some white into it later on to make the cape. And I have a hair color, just perfectly mixed. Uh, I use a bit of yellow and just a touch of brown. So I have a bit of uh, pastillage here uh, to make the white part of the eyes. Uh, snowflake cutters. I'm not going to cut anything, I'm going to use this one as a pusher, make an imprint on the icing to get the, some shades, and uh, liquid colors to make the face complete, and a set of knives, and that's all I can so far think of what I need to make this cake. If I use something else, you will see it on the later stage. So uh, what are we having here? The pastillage and uh, fondant. So, Pastillage fondant has got two different functions. Uh, fondant is soft, you can roll you can roll and coat things, it doesn't get dry, you can still cut later on. May, uh, of course, they've used this fondant to cover the cake so you can portion later on. And pastillage is a very rigid material when it's completely dry. So, but 
Sometimes we need something in between. Not so soft, not so hard. But we need to have still strength to hold things up, etc. Uh, that's why I mix pastillage with fondant in different ratios. Sometimes I use two thirds pastillage, one third uh, fondant, sometimes the other way around. So uh, it's just adjustable to mixture to give you some rigid to soft mixture to create different things. So I have pure pastillage here for the uh, center of the eyes. I use a little bit of uh, fondant in the in the uh, hair part so I'll because I need to gain some time when I'm shaping it and uh, on the face I mix one to one so I will also have a bit of more hardness on the face that I can push the hair parts on top of it so that's all what we need to make this cake we're gonna do next to start shaping the cake as I mentioned before I have one two three four five circles the skirt is approximately shape of circle but I don't uh, see any reason to use a kind of round cutter because the the after the waves of the skirt there is some some sort of like turning around so i better have a just approximate cuts by uh, approximate estimation and then also uh, carve it accordingly so there's no point to use round cutters that's why i'm going to use just a, uh, by hand so this is the first circle around this size so this about that this much and then second circle, a little bit smaller than that, so it's probably around that. That will be the third one, fourth one, and the fifth one, something around that. So I'm just going to cut this one approximately. I'm not shaping. Uh, this way, I'm just going to cut straight as you see it in the plane. So this is the first circle. Let me put this over here first. That's the second one. And the fifth one is very small, so this is about squarish like this. So see what we can do with these first. So I'm going to put all those leftovers now into a container. I have these uh, straws. I'm going to make another cut over here because it's very close, as you see, as the edge. So I'll place this one in here. So that's the first, first one. So that I will put a little bit of ganache here. Not too much, just to glue them together. So definitely what I'm doing now is quite rough, so I'm going to shape this up again when all the layers are finished. So I put the next one here and uh, use my scissor to chop this up a little bit. Fourth layer. Like 
Okay, and then the last one. Just like this. And I have still that much of space left to join the rest of the body. Let's double check the height so we don't do any mistake yet. That's about uh, 25 26 centimeters. Just go over here, it's about 25. Perfect. All right, next thing I do, I'm gonna just trim this down a little bit, just like this. See that center bar is holding the cake uh, just nicely, otherwise it's not going to be possible to do it so comfortable. Just like kebab, you know, just cut this one down nicely and then the rest will be slightly mixed together into a paste and then just do it. So I will add a little bit of this one also inside here and mix it. Mix it means not to bring to a paste stage but just make it sort of sticky. Just a bit of like a ganache here. Okay. And then just push this line inside here, all those gaps. Now, this waves, what you see around of it, I'm going to achieve that when I finish my, uh, my last coat with the ganache now. And after that, I'm going to coat this one, cover this one with the, with the uh, cling wrap, and I'm going to push. I'm going to push those areas, try to get that wave properly. That's already good. What I like to do now, I'm going to clean up a little bit. It's always messy when you start working with mud cake. I'm going to clean up a little bit, feel better about it, and then continue. I'm going to give off my first ganache coating. Now, once this one finish, I'm going to cover this one with the cling wrap and then uh, make those waves just by pushing. And I'm going to use different type of uh, sort of objects like little little uh, roller like this. I'm going to push. I'm going to use this one also just to simply just create those uh, waves around the skirt. Then we're going to put this in the fridge for a while and make it nice and hard. Then we're going to do that uh, masking with ganache one more time. Sometimes I coat uh, between first and second coat a chocolate. Uh, I'm not so sure I'm going to do that yet. I'm going to look at the condition first. Okay, this is just, I remove a rubber, rubber end bit of the rubber scraper. So it's just a very useful tool. Just go like this. 
gives a little bit more smoothness on the surface. As I said, this is not a final coat, just uh, distributing the ganache properly around the foot. Okay. Get all the airs out, just putting your hands around, pushing around. So then I look at this picture. Uh, there is a nice big one on the side. So I just take this one and push it in like this. Not on top, only at the bottom. And then one more here. Probably similar on the other side or so. The front side is uh, quite flat, as I see over here. Very flat. So I'm just going to get one more here, but leave the front quite straight. Okay. Just not to be too uh, repetitive in the same amount. I'm going to use also this one a little bit in between, like this, maybe this one make it a bit more deeper, here, yeah. small one here, so try to make it like irregular, but nice and sort of like design those, those lines accordingly. That's it, I'm going to put this one in the fridge now, my first coating is finished. So, see, do we need a chocolate or not? We will decide this later. I decided to put a very thin layer of chocolate in between the first ganache coating and second ganache coating. That's what I'm going to do now. So, I just remove the cling wrap. This cake is about 15 minutes, was in the fridge just now. Still not very firm but it's still cold enough and hard enough so we can continue to work on it. You can keep it a little bit longer if you wish. So I just use this uh, little rubber scraper again. Just carefully dip this inside. Just make sure that no more dripping happening. Just go around the cake with chocolate very carefully and slowly. That gives a little bit more crust to the surface. So cake will not gonna sink down when it's become room temperature, when it's presented in the room. Try to avoid that little bumps and uh, gaps with chocolate. I can already see that chocolate getting hard immediately because they are immediately touching to the cold surface. It's getting nice and firm. So it gives me a possibility now I can do my last coating with ganache immediately after that. Now, I want to uh, clean a little bit around of it.
All right. Let's go. Last coat with ganache. Okay, so I'm not going to cover this one with the cling wrap again. I'm going to put this in the, shortly in the fridge. Then I will just touch one more time with the, with the sort of like scraper, with soft scraper. It will be nice and smooth, so we are ready to uh, make the other parts that, uh, which we need to do out of sugar. For the Elsa's parts, I'm going to start from her face and continue with her arms. So when we're doing the doll uh, figurines, uh, probably the most difficult part is the face because every doll is a bit different and then uh, they have a sort of identical face that we have to match the characteristics that uh, the cake become look like this doll or this figurine. So I have a little solution for that. I use pastelage to make face molds. So every time I came across for a nice figure like this for example, that is a, a porcelain angel and uh, sometimes uh, even Barbie doll or other dolls, I just push my pastelage in the face and make a mold and keep it at the side. This, this is one of them I did a few years ago. This is very, very hard now. So I'm going to use this one for the uh, Elsa's face because it's just the right proportion. So let me just demonstrate for you how I do that. It's quite simple. You have a pastelage uh, conditioned. I just put it in the microwave nicely. So let's say I want to make this, this face as a mold. So I just make it, take it out and give it a good knead. I need a little bit of starch to do this. Make sure the pasta is very nice and soft and really good condition. Not too soft, not too hard. And I always do one flat, one close like this. Just like a bread rolls, turn around like that. I have a sur nice surface on the, on the top. Okay, then I just give a little bit of starch here and a little bit of starch probably on that face. Like that. Once the uh, pastilla is nice and soft, without waiting too long, I just push it in, just like this. And take it out. My face mold is ready. So as you see, that is uh, quite uh, nice. I can, uh, if this one dry, I can just put uh, fresh parsley inside, I get exactly the same face. So that's what I'm going to do with this uh, Elsa's face. Uh, what I have here, uh, I have uh, a pink uh, paste, which is uh, quite similar to the Elsa's face. I mix the fondant and parsley together. And uh, I have a couple of tools and scissor and a bit of water, probably uh, just to stick something. And I have also a special stent. When I'm ready with the face, I'm going to use this one to hold the face to dry. So let's start. How big is it? It's, uh, I don't know, I'm gonna try. So uh, this is the face I like to follow up. Just to measure that, uh, you take a piece of uh, uh, sugar paste, that mixture of uh, fondant and pastillage, and then put it over here. I think this is just uh, right. Uh, if I get the face correct in the front, I can always add something behind to get the, the head completed. So what I like to do now, give it a fresh knead again. Put a bit of fat on the table. Just a little bit. Okay, it's ready. Bit of starch here. 
A bit of starch here on the face. And push it in. So once you push it in, you get this excess on the side. You turn this one inwards. We can always cut it off or you just push it, uh, fold it behind. It will be the back side of the head. It doesn't matter how it's ugly it is here. Most important thing is the, the face. So when you look at these characteristics here, she has a very sharp chin and then she has a very big eyes. The nose is quite long and then thin lips. Uh, and then uh, between the eyes, there's quite a bit of distance here. So I'm going to try to match this one before the posterior dry here. And I'm going to do that easily. So. So that is the eyes separate. I try to get the nose quite down. Like that. Chin is quite sharp. Okay, first of all I do the nose, push it up a little bit, nose holes, and she has a very thin lips and then a smiley face, a cheeky smile, so just like this. Thin lips. Okay, the eyes, I'm going to use this device, the other side of that, it's quite quite flat and sort of like almond shape. So because the eyes is quite far away, so I'm going to start from here. And also like you see that this is a V shape, it's not straight, it's a V shape eyes. So I'm going to do this one too here, push it this way and that way and the other side. So it's coming up uh, quite okay. Of course, with uh, all the makeup, will make it quite a lot of difference in there. So that mold gives me a good start. Then I can just make a couple of more movements to match that uh, beautiful face correctly. Okay, let's get some white inside the eye. I take a pastillage. Pastillage is good because you can paint on pastillage a lot better than the fondant. So I just take a little bit here and then next one also I prepare. That's a bit small, that's a bit big so I change it to that. A bit more here. Make sure both of them same size. Good, keep this one here. And a uh, touch of water. Make sure that the, the piece we're putting in, it stays and sticks. Inside, just like almond shape. Push it. Give it first like this. And then use the same device. Get a little bit inwards here.
That's nice. I think this is already good. So uh, what I like to do now, I prepare my stand. You see, it's a styrofoam block, and then I just put diagonally that uh, metal stick inside, and I'm going to push this one inside. As you see it here, the face is like, like this, and then I'm going to put this one this way. Okay, so I just push it in, that that plastic thing. All right, and uh, get this one here, and put this one there. So this one is going to hold it in the right place and after that when I when I take this uh, plastic uh, straw out a uh, part of the base comes out and it will be ready to push another one inside. Okay good so uh, let's do the arms. I like to do the arms earlier and let them dry and when I do the chest part uh, it will be uh, once the chest is finished, I can push the hard side, the arm, ready, pre-hardened already, to push it to the softer part. Connection will be much more easier and I can position myself much more easier. So one side has to be hardened, another side has to be soft. That makes a good connection, at the same time also good positioning. So uh, this arm here is, uh, is pretty much uh, touching the sort of surface of the body. And this arm, exactly the same, but I like to keep this one a little bit more bended towards this way and holding the candle this direction. So let's do this one first. You just uh, get something here, approximately, and then uh, because we can always start from the hands and then go towards the, the shoulder, and now once the shoulder is ready, we can cut exactly from the right spot. So I'm going to prepare again two pieces. Okay, let's start from this one first. A bowl first. Table is clean, hands are clean, and then start the rolling. So approximately the size of this and just stretching like that and the hand as you see that here thick thin thick thin and hands a little bit more thicker again just like this first so I like to make the first hands pushing like that and flatten like this this is the this is the uh, this one the thumb and then this one like that so I'm using, uh, I'm holding this one in my hand, but not to worry about this shape first. Just take the scissor, cut the thumb, thumbnail, and then shape this one up a little bit more. And cut the fingers one after another. Second one. Third one. Most probably that uh, the pinky is uh, is not the right proportion, so we have to remove some of the uh, meat here to make the, this one also right. Okay, that's happened. So uh, I like to do first of all this one like this. This is always elegant, and this one bend like this also gives a little bit of turn like that for the for the nails, and then this part is very important. I give a bit of motion here, okay, then go slowly upwards to shape the 
arm perfectly. Okay, then position all the time. So look at it here. And then I think everything is perfect. The only thing what I like to do is this one. Turn this way. And then cut. So that's the that's the shoulder part. Okay, this is gonna be look like in the front and then they'll look like this. So I'm going to place this one here, let it let it rest for a while. That's not a problem. So I'm going to do the next one now. And this is not belongs to that. Always give a bit of fat on the surface so you don't have a hard time to shape it. You will fat will give you a bit time, more longer time to shape it. Same thing again, tick, tin, tick, tin, and tick again on the hand side. So a bit more sharper here. Tick, tin, tick, tin, tick. Okay, this is the other hand now. I'm gonna push the thumb side on the other side. Again, take the scissors in the hand. First of all, thumb. As soon as you cut the thumb, shape the other side of the hand and again start from finger by finger. One, two, three, and this one also remove the excess amount of flesh. And then this part. So this hand will hold a candle, as I said. So that's why it's time now to shape a little bit. The candle is about this size. That should be good enough. I don't want the hand is like grab it like a like a like a hammer holding hammer. Just a gently holding in the in the hand. Okay. Gonna be look like this, look like this. I think this uh, pinky is a bit too long. Should be holding look like this as you see that. I think probably look like this. Okay. Then I like to bend this this part. like this and then the, this over the left and right yeah I think this is good enough before then the icing are too too hardened and start cracking you you give your best to, to shape everything in the right position Okay, take this one here, here and there. I think my arms and face now is ready, so I just let it, this one completely dry. And the next thing what I will do, I'm going to uh, coat the cake 
uh, then I will add the other parts on top of it. So there's other parts involved here, of course, that the hair and everything else, but I will do this part all uh, later on. Earlier, I said I'm not going to use cling wrap anymore for this cake, but I used, I apologize for that, for the confusion, because I wanted to dry all my pots, the face and the hands and arms and everything, uh, another day uh, in room temperature, and I had to keep this cake in the fridge, so I had to cover with the cling wrap. So I'm going to remove this cling wrap now, and, uh, and I'm going to coat this cake with the first blue. I didn't use this cling wrap immediately. I waited first that the, all those uh, designs are getting nice and hardened. Then I used the cling wrap after that. So that's already ready to go. It's nice and cold and a little bit also moist in it. So I can glue that uh, glue uh, fondant on the surface first. So as you see over here, Elsa has a, a skirt uh, starting from dark color, goes uh, gradually to the light color and then end up is about white spots over here. So I'm gonna, I select about medium range here, the blue. I'm gonna cut from here till there uh, with this uh, fondant and I'm gonna add the, the chest part, the upper part of the body. And then after that, I'm gonna do some other work on it. You will see it very soon. So let's do this one quickly. I have my uh, rolling fondant here and uh, I think it's about a uh, little bit, uh, just okay. Just leave it like this, a little bit more, doesn't matter. Uh, starch on the table and give a good knead first. Always when you're starting with uh, rolling the fondant, you have to give a really good knead till it's uh, nice and smooth. You can never rely to fondant when it just comes from the bag or from the container and you can't start rolling. You have to give a good knead first. Just like a bread dough and then turning inwards and then you have end up with a nice clean surface on the top. Okay, thickness is right, it's about two and a half millimeters. Doesn't have to be too thin. Alright, uh, some cakes we just take the fondant and color from the top, but this is not the case because the top is very thin and then the bottom is more bulky, so I'm going to do it from front to back. That's the front side. So the icing uh, is not uh, long enough for a back, but uh, I can always patch with another piece because we're going to put any, uh, any kind of uh, details on this part. We will have second cutting on that anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Sometimes we use knives, sometimes we use scissors to cut the fondant. If you want to join the fondant, uh, two pieces together, and then you don't want to see the join, you have to do it while the fondant is still soft. Okay. Now, I like to add this piece to the back. Now, 
we're going to cut the base. First of all, give it a corner. I'm not cutting, I'm just pushing it. Just give a little bit more pushes with the roller so you have a, that natural foldings of the skirt. Okay, this part I don't need it, I'm just cutting off. There's a couple of patches here, but it doesn't matter because there's the cape coming on top anyway, so you won't see anything at all. I like to add now the upper part of the body. So uh, this fondant is quite soft. I'm going to take a small little piece and add a little bit of icing sugar inside, make this fondant a lot harder to get this upper part of the body. I did that. I add some icing sugar inside the fondant. As you see, this is quite firm. It can uh, be a lot more... Uh, easier to work with something additional on top of the body and this is uh, softer so this is soft and this is harder you can feel you can see that difference right okay now how much icing sugar i don't know i just added icing sugar till i feel comfortable i can handle the the hardness here and then i can also uh, get the sort of smooth texture if you put too much it will be quite crumbly and very difficult to work with but as you see, that is now very firm, uh, even the firmer than pasta yash. So I can just do the work what I need to do. Make it round first, round ball. And then slowly start to a kind of the shape. Let's start shaping up a little bit. So that's the upper part of the body. So I give it a little bit of slant like this. And that's the place that shoulder will come. And that's the tummy part. Okay. Let's put it in. So I know that from sideway it will be like uh, position a little bit more in front. And then his must have a sort of curve behind. So that's what I'm going to do. Just like this. Here. Then I use uh, this kind of tool to make this one a little bit more smooth at the front. Just melting these two parts together. I need to put a small little piece behind. Everything is fine, but I'm not happy with that, this part. Okay, uh, I need to get 
little bit more flat area here to get the arms easily to connect. So I just cut a small piece over here. I make sure I have enough platform here to connect together with the arms. That's it. Just double check on the side way. That looks quite proportional. Okay. What I want to do now, as you see here, the, the dress is blue, dark blue to light blue. So I'm going to give a little bit darker shade underneath. I'm going to spray some color and spray some uh, parallels and everything. So I like to protect my table so it doesn't get too much mess around. All right. That's pretty good. I have a blue color. Uh, I may use also a brush, but I have this spray. It's more than enough because that shade on the skirt is a bit like a, not too smooth, like there's dots on it. So that's why I'm going to do this one. Try here like this and just spray it from the bottom to the top part from dark to light. As you see, there's some spots appear underneath, which is nice. That's it. Not more than that. So then I take uh, some realizing. Uh, on the dress, upper part here, there's some little dots, white dots. I'm going to create that with the realizing very quickly. Realizing, clean sponge, unused, and probably I just put a bit of water here to make it easier to grab. like this and touch. Don't worry about the back because the, the cape coming on the behind. So I just do this. See that the white spots going downwards uh, lighter and lighter and less and less happy so so when I look at this dress again, there is a, a lot of dots on it and a lot of sort of like sparkly bits on it. So I like to create something which is similar to that. Uh, most simplest thing, I'm going to use pearl dust. So how to do that? While this uh, face is quite wet and uh, easy to, to apply something, I just put some dust over here on my hand, just a little bit, and just go and blow it. A little bit more. That's it. That's already good enough. Now that's ready. As you see, from dark to light, I achieved that already. Uh, we got we put some uh, pearl dust on it, give a bit of glitter, and uh, I think I have to let this one dry for a while. And in the meantime, I'm going to start to uh, make up the face. Okay, I make myself a little bit more comfortable. Uh, sitting position is much more uh, uh, easier to to standing and doing all those fiddly bits. And then uh, also what I did is the, I add a little bit more icing behind the head. So when we pushed the face into the mold, it was all easy to get it out, all the details, and I changed a little bit of like according to the Elsa face. But I waited till this front part is completely dry, then I had easily put some more uh, flash, put some more uh, fondant to the back of the head to gain this uh, uh, skull proportion. So I'm going to uh, apply paint to make this makeup part, the eyes and then lips and uh, eyebrows and everything. So what I'm using here, I'm using liquid colors, black, uh, sort of burgundy, red and blue. And also I have here egg white and sugar. So your brushes must be perfect. It has to be completely uh, new and also maybe also cared that is always in a good condition. 
and then the tip has to be really uh, nice and uh, very very thin you can make a very fine lines with that uh, you can buy some uh, edible ink pens uh, for uh, pastries but they're not that thin you cannot write such a, a thin lines with that you cannot make thin lines with that so i have a couple of them here so uh, i will have one problem when i use liquid colors on the icing uh, it will bleed a little bit, so I don't want to have bleeding, that's why I'm going to mix a little bit of egg white. So let's try to do something with here. A uh, characteristic on the face is very thin, li thin, very thin lips and has a bit of like a, a cheeks are a bit more reddish and nice and big eyes, a purple uh, shade behind the eyelashes and then eyebrows are nice and uh, sort of like f uh, thicker and uh, has a special shape. Okay, uh, I will start from the chick, make it a bit more reddish, and uh, just to be later on more comfortable to do everything else, I don't have to do this one uh, with uh, sort of like difficulties that I'm going to disturb somewhere else. So just dot of red here, and uh, just what I do is I use my fingers here, just like this here. Make sure that you, you have just a little bit of shade, and try somewhere else behind yep. okay need water That should be enough. All right. Next thing I like to do is that uh, behind the eyelashes, this purple shade. Uh, I have a red already here. Just have a dot of blue. Okay. Was a bit too much. It doesn't matter. Red also. That's okay, already satisfactory. Now, I like to do the blue part. So, uh, what I want to do, I'm just going to get this blue here. The, with the cotton, cotton bud. And just go for a, a blue part in the middle. Okay, let's go with the brush.
Okay. Now, next thing I like to do is there is a there's a white part on this area, so it's a very light area. So I'm going to clean this one up just with water. Let's start doing the black one. So I'm going to use this time egg white because I don't want I don't want to uh, the black is bleed. So I just go for like very nice and easy. That's very important, around the eye. I think I should just leave it like this, not fiddle too much. This lip more lower. Not bad, just a little bit of uh, lips. I will still use the egg white also for the lips in the brush and get me this uh, what do you call this burgundy 
that's good. A little bit of water, make it lighter and in white. Okay, let's see. I think it looks like Elsena. A little bit more uh, shine on the eye. That means I need to have a bit, uh, for a small uh, little dot on the eye for a little, make it wet. Just this one. If we make this beautiful hair correct, I think we achieve something here. So that is Elsa face. I'm pretty happy and I think this will make it a good finishing at the end. Next I will do the chest and the neck together. It will be one piece. So uh, every time there is a there is a head and the neck and the chest, uh, there is one connection. So the, either the, the neck comes with the head or the neck comes with the chest so I prefer the neck come with the chest so you don't see the, any kind of gap over here the gap underneath the chin will be uh, more invisible so that's why I like to do this one so I have this remaining uh, the pink so I like to take this one a little bit like this but before I do this I like to put my two piece of wood uh, skewers inside the, the body that can hold the neck and the head so why I, why I use two? Because I want to stabilize the head a little bit so it doesn't turn around. So I'm just placing over here, right here, and I push it carefully, carefully in. We have a, a stick underneath, but what I'm pushing is just behind it. That should be enough. I can push a little bit more if I want it later on. So, okay, let's go. I use a bit of hard fat on the table. So I've coat a little bit of fat on the surface, makes it easier. Give it a good neat. I believe. So I just cut this one uh, here approximately and then here also cut. So I like to push this wood and I want this wood comes from this area out so I will make it very carefully and slowly. Just here that area and then yeah, that's what's happened. So that's not very good because I think I have too much flesh. I take it out and cut a little bit more. A little bit of water. Push it again. I think it will be just right. So I'm going to squeeze the neck so much that it becomes a, a right proportion, right thickness. Because I can always chop the, the upper part. She has a, a thin neck, so just like this. And then the shoulder part has to be equalized with the side of the dress. I have to be careful not pushing too much and cracking somewhere else. I think this is just nice, like that. All right.
every time you use a knife, you have to clean up. So that I think is this area where we put it. Just remove that piece. Now, I like to uh, place my uh, head on it, but I don't want to glue it because I want to maybe just uh, push it in, take it out again. So once I'm sure that is the right, right connection, then I will make the gluing with a bit of white chocolate. So uh, I remove that piece. Then uh, I position myself into the right area so that I can push this one in and I know that it's, I'm doing right. Uh, this head is looking a bit right, so I'm going to make it like this. A bit like this. I think it's spot on. I think it's spot on. So, it's happened, but I want it to be happened. Now, what I like to do, I'm going to clean up again a little bit, and uh, because the next thing is we're going to use the uh, uh, lighter blue, uh, and then put our cape on it, but I'm going to show you a special uh, method that I can just cut the cape uh, as rolling fondant exactly the size. I'm going to make it first of all out of paper. Let's do some study now for the cape. I have this soft tailor uh, ruler. Uh, I can use this one for if I have to measure like a bended areas. As you see over here in this picture, the cape starting from this area around here and going around and end up somewhere around here. So that's why I like to measure this area first. From here going around and this will around 11 cm okay so no matter what the cape will start uh, straight over here 11 cm so let's do it over here 11 cm to put my darts here this one this one so uh, that's the beginning and pretty much the whole lot is like straight and going around so but when I come to this place I like to start from here and go around and then finishing here so let's make a, another measurement from here to there it's actually touching to the back of the back of the dress it will be somewhere around there something like that it will be around then uh, 38 centimeter so 38 will be just about, this paper is about 35, so I have to just get somewhere there, like this, go over it. And then also the back side of it, starting from there, going this way, 20, 33. 33 is about this size, it's about this size. But I want to have it a little bit more here, so I'm going to go somewhere around there. Okay, that means something like that and something like that. So that's will be my cape. Somewhere around there, cut like this, cut like this, like this and like that. I think we are on the right track with that. That gives me kind of good feeling when I'm uh, cutting that fondant and placing on the on the cake. I know that is my amount of fondant will give me what I'm looking for. Otherwise, it will be quite a sort of like a, a funny feeling because you're going to place it on. It's not going to be right. Take it out and cutting and etc. So uh, maybe I'm going to disturb something else here. That's why it gives me really good comfort uh, feeling that I roll it, cut it, and place it on. It will fit. The cape is a lot more lighter than the dress color, so that's why I mix a lot more white color into the same color. I make this light, uh, light tone for the cape. So I'm going to roll this one now.
if you look at the cape carefully you will see some snowflake effect so that's the textile design so I'm going to use some of these uh, uh, snow snowflake cutters uh, not to cut anything but just to indent just to give the texture onto the onto the surface of the fondant so it will at least give something on it we can also pipe some royalizing snowflakes on it but it will be quite tedious time consuming so that's why I'm going to just do this one That's already good enough. Okay, that's approximately here. So I just take this one, push it in for about large ones at the lower part, and then medium ones in the middle, and then small ones towards the top. Just the texture. I'm happy with that already. I use my pizza cutter for a quick result. Approximately like this. Gonna cut a little bit bigger. All right. Make some space. All right. Make sure that make sure that the body is wet enough that anything it comes on it it sticks immediately. Otherwise, we'll be tearing off. Good. All right. Let's start from the uh, rolling from the top and go from down, from down starting go upwards. Okay, it's far too big, but doesn't matter. You can always cut. Out from the front, looking good. Okay, now this should be cut definitely smaller. Very good. So then, what I have to only cut this part. After we glue the arms, I'm going to hide this part with another piece on top. Alright, so far so good. I'm going to join the arms now. Let's attach the arms to the body now. The arms, I have done it the uh, day before and it's nice and dry. And this morning also, I covered with uh, the same, I think, the light blue, on the, just uh, on this upper part not the hands. So as you see over here there's a there's a V shape. Uh, there's a typical uh, I can see that in this picture there's a V shape here. Uh, the coverage. This this also the tool going on top of this uh, arms. So that's why I did it's nice and dry now I can handle it. Sorry I couldn't show you while I'm doing it. Okay now what we have to do now first of all I position the hands. This one is to be stay like that because I wanted uh, the holding one candle here. And then this one is just going 
downwards like this. So I'm just pushing a little bit, get a bit of like indentation on the left and right side so I can remove that light blue and then connect it straight away to the more inner parts. Okay, now it's this ready. As you see, there's my indentation here. So what I like to do, I'm going to carve this out and then get some better connections uh, to the internal parts. This is out. I will go even more further in because I want to get this white chocolate go inside and holding this one nicely. That's it. Children cakes. I try to avoid using uh, little sticks, wooden sticks, etc., uh, as much as possible. That will be good enough to hold that everything in that area strongly. So I fill this one up first with the uh, white chocolate. So I have a foundation ready underneath. And let it dry first. And then the other side. Good. Okay, now I'm going to wait for a while till this white chocolate complete set. Okay, the white chocolate I put inside this uh, arm part uh, is completely dry, so I can join this one very easily now. So if I put a little bit of white chocolate here, a bit more here, glue it together, it will hold it in no time. So just a bit here, like this. And a little bit here and place it on and I wait for a few seconds there will be some white chocolate coming out here but doesn't matter because I'm going to cover that area with another another shawl that's holding so the right arm has to stay a little bit high like that because I'm going to let this arm uh, holding a candle in the hand. Okay, just a bit of white chocolate here and white chocolate there and stick it on, wait for a few seconds. It was one second less, so just for a little bit more longer. I always use that liquid air to cool it down. It will help me a lot. That's it. So, I'm going to put now one more small piece. Uh, just covering this shoulder here and then finishing it just uh, like a uh, sort of this shape. I'm going to put it on and cover that area, which is the joining part, but not going to be seen. Very small and very thin piece. Something about that size.
I'm just guessing this is the right size, but it doesn't matter. I'm going to check again. Anyway. Okay, let's see. Bit of water. Centralize it. That's right. The next thing we're going to make this beautiful plated hair. Elsa has a very special hair. So the hair is like a very light uh, blonde and uh, the plating is very important in this hair. And uh, I specially printed uh, the back of the head to see that how is the plating going on behind. So uh, I'm going to do that. I know how to plait the hair with three locks. So I'm not so sure how many is here, probably it's more than three, but I'm going to uh, use uh, three locks to achieve that. Uh, I believe it will be all right. So uh, I have already mixed my fondant in that color. I believe that I did a good job with that. So it's uh, pretty much the same color. So first of all, I just grab some. I guess this will be the right size, so I can try. What I do is just, just do like this, uh, approximately, and then sort of like shape this one, like that, and uh, put it on the hair, like this, and go in the front. I guess this is, will be all right. So uh, what I like to do first, as you see over here, uh, I like to put only uh, this part, this part, till to the front. So don't worry about this part uh, yet. I'm going to do this one later. So since that this uh, fondant is just enough, I'm going to divide this one into three equal pieces and start doing it. So like this, one and three. Put a little bit of oil on the table. like that. So this part is uh, quite uh, bulky. Then comes the round part here like this. I think this is the right uh, size. I flatten this one a little bit, only in this area. Okay. Then use my knife to create individual hair looking texture. Just like this. I don't need to have the other side. This short side should be enough. So that's already one. Put it here, second one. I have to be a little bit quick because I can't just take my time too much. Uh, otherwise the first lock will be dry when I finish the third one. That should be all right also. Flatten the front side and give the station as often as possible, side by side, all those lines. It's create that hairy look. There's the second one and the third one. Okay, let's do the plating first. So this tree, side by side, it will create that part here. And then what we do, we just put 
this one here first and the second one in here that one here that one here here and here and there three of the three locks pleating is quite easy so just like this and then make sure that end bit is quite sharp here and then squeeze that part a little bit maybe a small knife okay now this is uh, will cover the back of the head and I think this will be just right okay a little bit of water here make sure that the skull is uh, wet so I can glue the hair in it but not sort of like a uh, very watery otherwise it will be sliding down so it should be like nice and sticky you can use also a little bit of uh, white chocolate here so i'm pretty happy with this one now all right i'm going to start from the from the front going like this and turning like this and placing this one here like that I mean so far back of the hair is already there and all what we have to do now to do the front side a little bit more organizing here Pretty good. So I just use a bit more uh, knife strokes here. So far, so good. So now, next thing is I like to do is I want to make uh, starting from this side, starting from this side, and then go log by log, come to the front, and then make sure that this typical arrangement here like turning this way I'm gonna I'm gonna arrange this one at the end so I'm gonna do this one and that one now so this is of course now much more smaller pieces I need I don't have to rush now because this is nice and standing now and this is the most important part is already there so you just have to do the rest of it now slowly all right just take a small piece just like this Use this part, push it down. Just like a chopping onion. Uh, this part, as you see here, uh, is coming to the front. So I'm just going to separate this one a little bit here. And maybe spray a little bit. Make sure you're not spraying too much on the eye, otherwise the, all the color will be out of the place. That's good. Next one. Also spray here. Good. Now, one more. Now, next one will be this part.
Okay, now I don't want to do this one yet because this is the most important one. I will still have the one more layer underneath here. Just like this. That's pretty good. That's a bit too big. Okay, now the next one is a little bit, little bit of open area here, just gonna put one more small little piece. Okay, now is the very important. That is the. Uh, I want to finish this one with the uh, three pieces, but I want to get this uh, the height underneath. So I'm going to place a small piece over here as a lifter, just about here. All right. Then is the three piece. So I like to have one, two and three nice and exaggerated size. Now, you see this part here, one small piece coming out like this, I'm gonna do this together. Last piece, and I will put small little pieces over here to cover that little indentation which comes from the, the original mold of the first I press it in.
pretty good. Only what I'm not happy with, just this area. There's two, there's two lines here. I like the closest one too. That's already covered. Okay, uh, my Elsa hair is, I think, looks pretty good. One more, exactly here, something missing there. That's it, everything covered, it looks uh, pretty good. I wasn't very happy with this texture on the cape, so I asked my wife to cut some of these uh, snowflakes also using the same cutter. So I placed them on around here. I think it looks much better now. But with this beautiful plated hair, my three-dimensional Elsa cake is now finished. I hope my little princess will be happy with this cake. And I also hope that this tutorial will help you to make some other little princesses happy as well. So I'll see you soon with another tutorial like that right here. Uh, don't forget to subscribe please. I am Serdar Yener from yenersway.com. Bye for now. Thank you for watching. Please don't go anywhere because we're going to show you some of these shots from the actual birthday party.